Hello Arts 102 and welcome to Project 1. Um, there's basically uh, just a couple of tools that I want to show and they all relate to selections and layering. Now selections and layers are kind of the heart and soul of Photoshop. This is kind of what makes Photoshop Photoshop um, in my opinion anyway and um, this is what makes Photoshop more than just a paint program. So, what you're going to end up doing is, um, if you make a painting or a drawing, you already know the tools to use to do that, so um, that's fine. If you're going to make a collage, um, you have an idea, but I'm going to show you a few more layering techniques, whether you're doing any of those three. So, let's start just by opening Kid and Mom and Old Folks here, and... I'm going to download that one. I'm going to open them both. So I'm going to probably get kicked over to Photoshop here, but I'm going to jump over to old folks and download that one too. Okay, so here's the kid and mom photo. And I think the old folks started. Yeah, it's going. That's going to take a couple minutes. While that's downloading, I'm going to start a new blank file. And the new blank file that I start, actually, I'm going to use the shortcut key. Uh, I'm going to press Command N. And the new blank file that I start is going to become the, the basis of my collage. Now, um, I had something in the clipboard. Um, there are basically, uh, there's no required resolution for your collage or painting, but there are good choices and there are bad choices. So um, when you watch the video on resolution, you'll have some idea of how to decide this sort of thing. You know, it just depends on what your de design needs. But I'm going to go with 2500 width and um, 1500 height. We'll just try that. Make sure that's on pixels too, by the way. Don't forget that part. Okay, and up here when I get multiple files going I've got these tabs this will basically um, and when that other download finishes it's gonna open up and I'm gonna have a third tab this is just like when you're browsing if you uh, use your browser see there it is and I'm gonna move that tab over to the left this is just like when you're browsing web pages and you um, have multiple pages open and obviously this these are Photoshop documents and you can close any of these with that X button. You can also just use File Close. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting pieces out of this. We're talking collage here. What do you do when you collage? Well, you cut up pieces of photograph, probably, or, or whatever material you're using, and you glue them onto a blank canvas, typically. So how do I do that in Photoshop terms? Well, the answer is by making selections I'm going to start with a selection and I'm going to use that as a way to create another layer and start layering up this canvas. And I'm not going I'm not going to end up with a finished collage here or necessarily even a good collage, but um, let's start with uh, let's start with kid and mom here. And I'm going to move this over cuz what I'm going to end up doing here is with this tab next to this one it'll be just a tad more convenient I'm going to move my selection into this document so <clears throat> what I want to do is first of all I want to make the selection and I've got a few different selection tools over here the marquee the lasso the magic wand um, these are just a couple of the basic selection tools and if I click on that marquee I've got rectangular and elliptical um, you really don't use single row or single column a whole lot. It's kind of um, limited use. I've basically never used these. Um, polygonal lasso, lasso tool, polygonal lasso, and magnetic lasso. Um, the lasso tool just draws a selection. Polygonal lasso um, draws a, basically a polygon. It's like single point, straight line to the next. Magnetic lasso is kind of trying to find edges. Um, the the way it works is, I'm a little iffy on the functionality of it. If you get some results out of it, great, go for it. Um, more power to you. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with a square. Just We've done this simple, very simple um, type of selection. You just drag out a selection. You click and drag. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn on my Move tool. And let me do this once and just watch. And then um, I'll, I'll redo it and you can work along. So <clears throat> I'm going to take my Move tool and I'm going to move my selection but I'm going to hold down my mouse button. You see that yellow dot that's indicating that I'm still holding down my mouse button and I'm going to hover over the other tab for a second and now it puts me in the other document and now I can put this selection in roughly the place where I want it to go and drop it in. If you see a profile mismatch um, it's not that big of a deal for terms of this class. You can research that if you're just itching to know what it means, but it doesn't matter that much. Just click OK. All right, so like I said, I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to do it one more time. We'll do this together. Now, grab this, drag it up to your other tab for your collage. You're still holding down the mouse button. When it switches you over to the other document, just drop it right in. Now, I can use Command-T to transform, and that's great. Go ahead and transform away. Um, I can, you should feel free to rotate it and all that kind of stuff, but there's a couple of caveats when transforming a photograph that you need to know about. What you don't want to do is you don't want to size up too much because a pixel-based photograph is not going to get any prettier as you get bigger and bigger. You can start to see these jagged edges. I'm, I'm exaggerating this quite a bit, but basically this is how resolution works, and if you watch that video you'll understand why this is happening. So, um, size down, always okay. Um, don't worry about sizing down. Sizing up, the honest truth is you can get away with a little bit of it. Um, if you're trying to be really professional you want to basically avoid it at all costs, but um, if you're not too worried about it, you know, just pay attention if you're sizing up, watch for these jagged edges, try to avoid it. If it gets too bad and really unsightly, then you might get marked down on craftsmanship for that. So <clears throat> once you're done, um, actually before I say that, let me point something else about, uh, point something else out about transforming photographs. What you also do not want to do ever is you don't want to squash or stretch it because it looks stupid. It really looks, I don't know, it's a pet peeve once you get used to looking at photographs. If you see them squashed or stretched, it's like, oh, that's wrong. So don't squash or stretch it. Keep it the same aspect ratio. Size up a little bit if you have to, but try to avoid it. Size down is always okay. Okay, so let's apply that transformation and we've got one piece of a collage here. Okay, let's go back to Kid and Mom. I'm going to use the shortcut key to deselect. I'm going to do a Command D. Let's get rid of that marching ants. And um, let's go to the elliptical marquee tool. And I'm going to draw out a circle around Mom's face. And <clears throat> what I want to do is um, I want to try to get that whole uh, head in there if possible. Uh, but what's happened here is I've missed a little bit in the top left. So a couple keys you can use when you're transforming, um, I'm sorry, not transforming, when you're making a selection with, with those marquee tools is the shift key, once again, constrains proportions. Remember these modifier keys apply to anything that you click and drag with, shift and alt. So, and the alt key, instead of dragging from the corner, drags from the left. So I'm holding down Alt. Um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Instead of dragging from the corner, drags from the center. So I'm holding down Alt and my marquee looks like this. I'm holding down Shift also, which is keeping it proportional. These are independent. So here it is with just Alt, no Shift. It won't constrain the proportions, but it will drag from the center. Here it is again with just Shift. So it's going to drag from the corner but it'll keep the proportions. And here it is with both. So 
Now I've missed a little bit, I haven't let my mouse button up this whole time either, I'm still holding the mouse button down. I've missed a little bit of the top of the head there. And in order to get that, I have to either restart my selection or move it. Um, it's much easier to move it. Uh, if you can kind of get used to this, you have to start um, kind of, I don't know, you got to do weird stuff here. But if you're using all these modifier keys at the same time, it gets a little hard to get used to. I'll just put it that way. And um, But you can hold down the space bar to kind of scoot your selection around just like that so I can move it around I can reframe how I'm how I'm selecting here so that I've got kinda of more centered on the head there so there you go now I can let that up and I've got my selection made so <clears throat> um, let me uh, show you something about selections real quick before we drag this over to the to the collage document. Now this is an important concept, so pay attention. I'm going to save my selection under the select menu here. Down towards the bottom, I've got this save selection command. This isn't that big of, big of a deal with a marquee, but your selections could very possibly start getting complex on this very assignment. Um, if not now, probably soon if you're going to continue working on Photoshop and you probably don't want to redraw the whole thing. So I'm going to click Save Selection and what it's going to do is it's going to ask about where I want to save it and it's going to offer me other documents, usually I don't use that, and um, what kind of channel you want to make. Uh, a channel is um, it's a number of things. One of the things it can be is a selection. So I'll just call that um, Mom Selection and we're going to do new channel and we can keep this going we can make new selections and we can do a save again we can add to the channel subtract and intersect um, but we're just making a new channel just saving the selection exactly the way it is and I want to click OK and take a look at this I'm going to click on my channels over here it's right next to the layers and these are your channels for the image it's red green and blue you got a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. Um, you don't have to worry about that too much. This is kind of advanced. But I do want to show, however, here's the selection image, and I want you to understand what a selection is. Um, a selection is basically just an image, the same as any other. You can paint on it, you can filter it, um, you can erase, you can draw, whatever. Um, the way it works is the white pixels are selected and the black pixels are not selected. White pixels are 100% selected, black pixels are 0% selected. And any pixel in between, let's say you got a 50% gray pixel, that pixel is 50% selected. I'll zoom in real close to the edge here so you can see some pixels that are, this is your anti-aliasing here, so you can see a, grade, a gradation of pixels here and these are all selected at different values. So that is essentially how a selection works and you have to understand that to understand Photoshop. Okay, If you, if you were doing that along with me, if you just watched that's fine, if you're doing that along with me make sure you click back on the RGB layer, uh, sorry channel not layer, and let's go back to the Layers tab. <clears throat> and now I'm going to turn that Move tool back on. And I'm going to move that up to my other document in the same way. And I'll drop that in. I'm going to click Don't Show again on that so it stops popping up. OK. And I can transform it and rotate it and all that good stuff. So, another thing that you might want to do if you really want this to look like it's paper, which is not a necessity for this assignment, but if you want it to look like it's kind of like a collage on paper, you can get into the layer effects that we learned about in the emphasis unit, 
and you can give this a little drop shadow and again just be gentle with this don't give it too much um, and and again don't worry too much about these numbers just kind of experiment with this until you've got a value that that looks like what you want but making a little um, making a little drop shadow kind of looks like it's a piece of paper that that's stuck on another piece of paper but it should be really close to the edge these values will be different depending on the size of your document so don't take those values too literally okay and of course I mean that's not like that's the only one you can use there's there's always like stroke I like stroke that looks nice bevel and emboss if you want um, and again just tweak the values a little bit um, you know don't just accept the defaults just take a look at some of the options that you've got in each one if you're going to use these okay so click OK um, okay so that's that's fine we're done with kid and mom let's close that no we don't need to save it that selection was not incredibly hard to make so no big deal um, let's go over to old folks okay uh, let's take a look at the lasso tools up here I'm gonna start with the regular lasso tool and if you want to try to kind of cut around the old guy's head what you're gonna do here is just draw your selection more or less it's as simple as that and we'll just come back to the beginning there if you don't end right at, exactly on your beginning point it will draw a line from where you ended to your beginning point so and you can also use that to um, you know do stuff like that and make a selection that goes from here to here and then jumps back to the beginning point okay so I'm gonna turn on my move tool again I'm going to move that selection over to the other document and I'm going to drop it in. And now what happened here, actually I was hoping for a little more variation, but um, this is a little bit bigger than these. Now <clears throat> what might happen in yours is you might end up with one that's a little bigger than the others. You might end up with one that's a lot bigger than the others. You might end up with one that's so much bigger that it takes up so much room that you have to zoom out to transform it so if that happens just zoom out and press the command T and you might see um, you might see boundaries out to here sometimes just depending on the size of your images because putting a really huge image into this will it'll make basically that happen so let's bring the size of this down. I'm going to hold the shift key down when I'm sizing this so it doesn't end up getting squashed or stretched and I'm going to put that right here and if I really like these layer effects right here on that I created previously I can right click on that and choose copy layer style and then I can apply that to other layers by right clicking on those layers and I can choose paste layer style and it'll bring in all the stuff that I made the stroke the drop shadow and the bevel and emboss so I'll just leave it maybe it would I mean it might even be better with less I'm, I'm thinking maybe it is I could turn off the the stroke and the bevel and emboss. These little eyeballs next to each effect turn the visibility on and off. The little eyeballs next to your layer turn that layer on and off. Hasn't gone anywhere, it's just not visible. So um, keep that in mind. It's something you can use easily. Okay, I'm going to go back to my old folks image and I'm going to deselect with Command D and I'm going to get into my lasso drawer and turn on the polygonal lasso so this is sort of like as if you were cutting something out with a pair of scissors you're gonna end up with this sort of polygonal shape at the end so 
single click and just kind of go around the head single click single click you know you don't have to try to be perfect with this um, single click single click single click and it just draws a straight line from one click to the next kinda looks like it was cut out with a pair of scissors don't you think okay and then same thing we'll turn on our move tool and we'll just move it over to the other there we go command T we're gonna size that down hold down the shift while you're sizing this stuff and click apply actually I think it needs to be sized down just a tad more there we go <clears throat> now these layers are starting to stack up and they're not really named anything um, let's start talking about some layer management here let's name layer 4 grandma and let's name layer 3 grandpa grandpa and let's name layer 2 I think was mom yeah and layer 1 let's name that kid now this becomes a big deal when you start really getting a lot of layers. It's going to be kind of a problem if you don't know what it is you're you're dealing with. And don't forget that auto select. Sometimes that can be helpful so you don't have to go down here and select the layer you want to move once this collage starts layering up. Then you you might just want to turn that on. It might make it makes it a little more intuitive for um, moving stuff around. And what I want to do is I want to um, I want to select all of these layers and group them together, and we'll call this family. So I can single click on the first layer, and then I can shift click on the last layer that I want to select, and it will select all of the layers from the first to the last that I click on. And then I'm going to press Command G or Control G on the PC to group them and now I've got a group and I'm gonna call that group family and you might have other groups such as background and things like that um, trees I don't know however your collage pans out that's a very individual thing so uh, but that's a, a way that you want to kinda of get used to to um, to organize your layers and keep things um, keep things manageable and by the way when you have this folder selected you can, oh fooey, make me a liar. Got to turn off auto select layer to do this. Um, when you have the folder selected with auto select off, then you can move these as a group and they'll stay relative to one another. No pun intended. Oh, so this is now um, grouped. If you need to open that folder back up, that little triangle next to the folder that's what you want to click on to spin that down and get at the, the contents of any given folder and then you can collapse it again when you're done keeps things very neat and tidy when you've got lots and lots of layers in your particular document and that alone really will make a perfectly fine um, project one. I, I've found lots of students want to go a little deeper than that so I'm gonna close this I don't need to save any of this stuff um, I'm gonna go to my Arts 102 course and I'm gonna grab the blending modes picture and download that okay this doesn't make very much sense right now what I want to start with here is I want to turn off this shape one and I want to leave this layer on this is um, there we go so you might recognize this painting uh, but what this is is basically I've put a shape on top of this painting and if I turn that on it does this weird thing 
and that's because of the blending mode. So if you click on this blending mode, you'll see a number of blending modes. First, let's look at normal. Let's just start there. And basically, normal is kind of what we're used to. It just covers up what's behind it, like it's a solid, opaque piece of um, paper or whatever kind of material, something blue. And the opacity is simply opacity. I don't know any other word for it. How transparent is the thing? You turn that up and it's 100% opaque. It covers what's behind it. You turn it down and it becomes semi-transparent. You turn it all the way down and it becomes invisible. These lines will not be here. These are just an illustration that you have this layer selected. That's just a Photoshop helper. So if I deselect that layer, it just disappears entirely. Okay, so I'm going to turn that opacity back up to 100%. And I'm going to open up my layer modes, and I just want to talk about what these are. Um, the modes that begin with darken are all ways of darkening what's beneath it. The modes that begin with lightning, or lighten, they're all modes of lightening what's underneath it. These are pixel blending modes, um, and it's going to blend the pixels of this layer with everything that's underneath it and they all do different things. You'll notice again that the opacity is 100%. Keep that in mind here with, with these modes that we're about to play with. Um, the ones that begin with overlay are composite modes, and what they do is basically weird stuff. They work on a formula, and um, the pixels that are underneath it will either be darkened or lightened. Um, the ones that begin with difference are even weirder. I'm not even really sure how to explain these. Uh, there's a math to it, but that doesn't matter. It's just a, a matter of experimenting. If you get a look that you like with these, then great. Um, and then these four down here, these are pretty nice for colorizing black and white photos. If you want to do any of that, you can um, make a layer that's in color mode, and you can paint in that layer, and it sort of colorizes the black and white photo. So <clears throat> those are the basic uh, layer blending modes. And if I start with uh, darken, just to kind of show that, like I said, remember this is at 100% opacity, right? And we can see that the image is still showing through. That's because we've changed the blending mode to darken what's underneath it. And each of these have sort of a different way of doing it, but they're all going to darken what's underneath it, one way or another. Now, the ones that begin with lighten, those are going to lighten what's underneath it. If I'm darkening what's underneath the layer, uh, one thing is to be aware of, for example, if I, if I darken a white layer, then what's going to happen is that nothing will be darkened because it has to have at least a um, slight gray value. So if I make a new layer and I've got it on normal mode, so that's good. I'll just paint some white. And if I put that on a darken mode, it just vanishes. That's because it doesn't do anything with white. If I put that on a lighten mode, it comes back as if it's opaque. Now watch what happens when I invert that. that under image yeah image adjustments invert or command I for short if I invert that it's going to turn it black so now I'll turn that back to normal so you can see the black lines so now all of the darken modes are basically just going to be black all of the lighten modes are basically just going to disappear So this gets really interesting, and it especially gets interesting when um, you have something that's a little bit more continuous tone, and it has a, a range of values for the blending to occur. It becomes, uh, you can really make some very subtle imagery, and your, um, your layering can really start to take off. So try to do some experimentation with this and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to close that one. That's blending modes. Let's go back to Safari. 
And I'm actually going to skip courthouse. I'm actually going to change the order here. There we go. <clears throat> so you'll see this order when you come back. <laughs> the uh, farmhouse and the scarecrow are the two I want next. So I'm going to grab the farmhouse. And I'm going to grab the scarecrow. That's probably downloading right now. So I'll just click download. And that will open in just a second. Alrighty, here is a nice little farmhouse. Maybe not that nice, but wouldn't want to live there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this scarecrow image and I'm going to do a very common Photoshop thing. And that is, this is kind of what's commonly referred to as the Photoshop um, as a verb. So this is taking a character off of a background and putting um, that character into a different setting. We're going to take this scarecrow and put him in front of the farmhouse. And this image has been very deliberately designed to allow you to do this with some selection tools. This is um, shot on a solid color background, which in this case happens to be the sky. It's a very clear sky, and that was a deliberate choice. Um, the sky is easy to select with the right selection tools. Now, I'll show you what happens with these magic wand tools. Magic wand W for short. Um, it's probably on quick selection by default, so let's start with quick selection. Now what these do is they select a range of colors and the color, the selection, will um, it will spread out to the extent of the color that it finds, the color range. And in order to um, use the uh, magic wand brush, the quick selection tool, what you want to do is you want to kind of swipe out a range of color to select. And it tries to incorporate that whole range. You'll notice that the value at the bottom of the sky is much different than the value at the top of the sky. Um, that's typical sky. So. What you want to do is you want to get all those values. I'm going to go from the top to the bottom, and you'll notice it really jumps out there. And I'm going to grab this side by just clicking over here, and it grabbed a whole bunch of stuff here. Now here's the thing about the quick selection tool. Um, well, before I talk about the thing about the quick selection tool, same as the magic wand tool, let's put this in the other image. Um, this is not the best selection, so let's take a look at that. Um, what I want to do is move it to the other image, but what's happened now? Think about this for a second. If I turn on the move tool and I move it, it's going to grab the sky. I didn't select the character, I selected the opposite of the character. I selected everything but the character. That's not what I want. I'm going to invert my selection by clicking on select um, inverse or command shift I. Select inverse and that just flips the selection. Now I've got the scarecrow selected. And the next thing I want to do is now that I'm getting into some more complex selections, let's save this. Select, save selection. I'm going to make a channel called um, let's call this uh, selection brush so we know what tools we used here okay so I'm gonna take this selection tool uh, sorry I'm gonna take the move tool and I'm going to just do the same thing I've been doing I'm gonna drag it over to the farmhouse and I'm gonna drop it in place and he's gonna need room for some friends so let's transform him and size him down a bit. Now this is not a person so you could probably get away with stretching it a little bit if you wanted to. I, I still usually won't with any photograph but if it's not something you know if it's something that's not a person it's very likely that um, or an animal it's very likely that you can get away with doing a little bit of that. So let's click OK 
And so let's take a look at what went wrong here. So if you haven't already noticed, first of all, um, a large portion of the right side of the scarecrow has been lost. And what happened here is we've got the sky showing through on some of these areas. Well, that's because the quick selection and the magic wand, they both will not go into enclosed areas. They'll only go up to the boundaries of what they can handle. So let's go back to the scarecrow image and deselect Command-D or Control-D on PC. And let's try that other selection, the quick, the, sorry, the magic wand tool. I think I called that channel the wrong thing. I always forget what that other thing is called. Like I want to call it selection brush. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select with the magic wand. If I click somewhere, um, I've got a very low tolerance on my options right now. This basically states how many levels will that selection spill out from the point that you clicked on. And zero is a very, very low tolerance because in a ten continuous tone photograph, you've you've got pixels that have little variations right next to each other. So we can crank that tolerance up a little bit. Usually I try to start maybe around 32-ish and then I kind of play from there. So as you can see I can click on these various areas and I'll get a much wider range of selection. Um, now I don't want to just select this little bit, right? So what I actually want to do is, first of all, I have to start it. So I'm, I just clicked here with the magic wand, and I've got a selection that it, at 32 tolerance, it comes down to about here. And this is about where it starts to drop off. So if I come down to the area that I didn't get, I can hold down the shift key. Same modifier. Keeps showing up, doesn't it? Well. Holding down the shift key with um, your marquee, your lasso tools, or your magic wand tools, that's going to add to the selection. See how the plus is next to that magic wand? Holding down the alt key is going to subtract from the selection. So I want to add to this selection. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to add the areas that didn't get selected the first time. Now you might be thinking, hey, I can go in here and grab all these areas that are showing through. And sure you could, um, but geez, that's a lot of work. I mean, your instructor is not sadistic. I don't want you to have to do that kind of finite level of detail. So <clears throat> let's just leave it with the flaws in so we, so we know. Um, I'm going to save that selection again. Select Save Selection and I'm going to call this one Magic Wand. Whoops! Skipped a step, didn't I? I sure did. Let's select the inverse. So I've got the character instead of the sky. Now I'll select Save Selection and what I'm going to do is I'm going to overwrite that other channel that I made. I can do that right here where it says which channel do you want it to go into. I don't want it to go into a new channel. I want it to go into the magic wand channel. And now these options are showing. Do I want to add, subtract, intersect? No, I want to replace the channel. Make the correct selection. In fact, if I add to the channel, what's going to happen? I'm going to have exactly everything on the board selected. So replace the channel and click OK. Okay, now we turn on the Move tool, and let's take that over to Farmhouse, and let's drop it in there. And he's bigger than his new friend. His new friend is bigger. Um, so let's transform that and bring him down in size a little bit. Okay. Let's apply the transformation. <clears throat> okay, so better. It is better. But what's happening now, again, we've got that little bit of sky showing through. And if you want to really get particular about 
your composite here. That's the correct term for this. Is it's called a composite image. The uh, the edges generally have this blue halo, and that's very typical of a composite image, even one that's been properly made to become a composite image using the Photoshop tools. So let's deselect that and let's take a look at one more. Uh, this one is kind of the uh, Cadillac here. So uh, got a lot more options, going to take a little bit of getting used to, but this is if you really want that composite image that looks like a, a real um, image even though it's fake this is what you gotta master so here we go I'm gonna go to select color range and the difference between this and the magic wand is subtle but the first thing I need to do let's start with um, what I'm looking at here there's um, a selection that is of sampled colors that's what I'm gonna do is when I come outside of the samp of the color box I'm gonna be able to sample a color um, I'm going to start with a single point sample, and this box right here is showing me my selection. If I have it on image, it shows me what the image is. I usually want to look at the selection when I'm looking at this dialog box. So let's grab that first point sample. And so here's our selection. And what I want to do is, like I said, that continuous tone photograph that has a lot of different values from top to bottom. So now I need to add to that point sample, just like with the magic wand. So I'm going to click and drag up to the top of the sky here, and you can see it starts to fill in the top area with solid white. And then I want to go down. Let's grab the rest of this stuff down here. I'm just kind of clicking and dragging to make sure I've got all those white values and take a look what's happening here so that keeps flipping by the way because when you push your control button down it just flips it for you so you can just kinda of jump between the two but I use my control button to turn on my mouse locator as well as zoom in and out so sorry about that but um, it's a little confusing but that's what's going on um, you can use the control button to flip between the two so take a look it goes into the holes in this image it doesn't stop at the borders. So that's kind of useful. And that's pretty good. I'm going to click OK on that. And there you go. You can see it went into all the little holes. Everywhere there's blue in the image, it selected that. So, by the way, um, this is going to, if you've ever heard of um, green screening or blue screening, you don't want to wear green in front of a green screen or blue in front of a blue screen for this reason. You will end up selecting that that bit of clothing. So, <clears throat> um, let's do the select inverse, command shift I or control shift I on PC. And now I've got the character selected. Um, but hold on a second. Um, we're going to take a look here and what I want to do is uh, I want to try to get this a little bit more refined because I'm gonna get that halo again remember that halo that we got around the edge of the other scarecrow scarecrows plural we've got it on both um, it's especially prominent on the right one but it's on both well if I click on select refine edge I can take any selection and I can refine the edges of it as it were. And you can see that halo. So what I want to do is um, I can basically I can find a radius around the edge of that and a lot of times smart radius will work pretty well. I'll just bring the radius up by a little bit maybe two pixels and right away that that halo starts to go away so it's finding the edges a little bit better by looking at a slightly larger sample around the edges so I can now adjust the edges by smoothing them a tad if you smooth it too much 
some of these um, choppy corners might get smoothed out but this is a process of kind of deciding um, what kind of detail you want to give up because you have to give up a little bit of detail when you're doing this around the edges that's just the way it is um, but it can be very minute when you get this really mastered um, we can feather the edges which basically creates a little bit of a gradient in transparency as the selection drops off I do a little bit of this but not much um, and again remember if you have a bigger image these these values are going to change um, wherever you got pixel values they're gonna change you might have a bigger radius than two pixels and you might have a bigger feather than 0.8 pixels but I think that's fine for this and contrast will just kinda sharpen up the edges we can bring the contrast up to 19 30 percent somewhere around there and then there's the shift edge. You want to make sure to uh, play with this a little bit. This is what's sometimes um, referred to as a mat choker. And this will contract or expand the edges. And most of the time you want to shift it in. And you can see now that that blue just kind of fading away. You can also see let me put that back at zero because I think it's probably happening more over here. You can also see in this area there will be some uh, some loss in the little straws where they're you know very small. So and like I said, that's you're going to get a little bit of that. Oh, quite often you're going to get a little bit of that. So you can go through this too and redefine in select areas. Um, the edge detection. That's what this paintbrush does. It's not going to let me paint on it. I can just kind of have it recheck the edges. And sometimes doing that a couple times will help out the uh, composite a little bit. So right there that kind of found those holes a little better. The brush size works. The left and right bracket brush size that we learned already that works better. Now right there I just lost a little piece of straw. Like I said, I mean I can live with that. Um, it's a process of deciding what detail to get rid of. I'll just get a little bit more of a radius around around his armpit there. Oh, that didn't go so well. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not gonna undo it. Fine, whatever. Um, and the decontaminate colors is also kind of handy. This will this will really take out the rest of that blue halo. What it's going to do is right around the edges it's going to desaturate it. If you look real closely it's turning black and white right around the edges. So what we're looking at here um, if you try to do this with somebody whose hair is whipping around this is going to become uh, quite the big deal. So <clears throat> If you want to decontaminate the edges a little bit, you might want to try that. Uh, if you use that, you have to decide how to output this. It cannot do this with a selection because it's actually changing the pixels. Um, new layer with layer mask is a good way to do it. I'm just going to do a new layer so that it just makes a, a, a whole new layer. I don't need the, the extraneous information. I don't need the layer mask with all the extra stuff around it. We'll just make a new layer with the pixels chopped out and um, that'll do it. That's how to use Refine Edge with your selection. So click OK on that and here's my new layer. And that basically just was uh, the result of my <clears throat> uh, my selection refinement. So it also turned off my selection which is kind of annoying so I'm gonna go up to select and I'm gonna choose reselect because I wanted to save that selection. So I'm going to reselect and I'm going to click on select save selection and this is in a new channel called color range. So click OK and I can actually turn this selection off before I do the move because this is on a blank layer so it doesn't need the selection and just in case something shifted I'll just turn it off so that I'm moving everything here. So same thing I'm gonna move it over to the other image and I'm gonna drop it in 
and let's put him next to his friends and transform him and he is the clear winner so I would not call all of that mission critical for a, a project one but this stuff is definitely stuff that students like to know about so they I get a lot of questions about this stuff and I thought I'd post this tutorial so that you could you could take a look um, let's go back to scarecrow just for a moment and I want to go to the channels and I just wanted to take a look at the the different channels so here's the selection brush here's the selection that we ended up with selection brush here's magic wand and here's color range so and actually I ended up with a few stray pixels there which is um, a bummer if that's that's supposed to be black so one thing you can do is by the way you you can paint right into this channel you can just turn on a paintbrush this is something important to understand about selections um, you can turn on a paintbrush or any tool that you can draw with and I'm painting black you can just paint right on the selection and you can kinda of clean this stuff up now I can't see my image that's a minor detail right but I know that this should just be straight black here so I can kinda of cover that up with pure black and get those pixels kind of fixed up. Okay, now let's close these two. Um, you might even want to save this just to come back to it and take a look at it. Um, it's, I guess there's, uh, you know, if you want to take a look and experiment with it again. I'm going to click don't save and if you want to save that one feel free but it doesn't really matter um, let's go back to Safari or whatever browser you're using and I've got two more files I want to take a look at courthouse and fireworks let's open up courthouse download it and let's go to fireworks oops I think I clicked farmhouse let's go to fireworks and download that So I want to select the foreground here, the, the architecture, and I want to put this on a different background. And this is going to be um, an interesting case because here's my background I'm going to use. Great, wonderful. Let's go back to the courthouse. Um, what's going to happen here is there is no one selection tool that I can easily do do this with the sky is too irregular in tone we've got some clouds so I can't just use the color selection uh, the the magic wand isn't going to get me very far for the same reason and the um, the color range is going to work great to select the blues but once I get into the whites it's going to start spilling into a lot of the uh, courthouse over here there we go so you can really see that I've got if I try to use the color range I've got all this stuff selected and that's not what I want what has to happen on this is that I have to have a combination of selection tools do this job and that's very typical. That's probably the most common way that this is going to go. So, um, especially for your average photo that you didn't really plan to do this with. Um, and this is, again, let's back up and remember the big picture. Um, you can just cut this out um, like you're cutting it with scissors. I mean, you don't have to worry about very meticulously cutting the foreground out of the background. I, again, I'm just showing this to... Um, enrich your knowledge and because a lot of students ask about this so I figured I'd put this together so <clears throat> what needs to happen is we need to use a combination of tools uh, what I'm going to use 
is I'm going to use the polygonal tool because we've got some very geometric shapes and I think I can do a lot of this with the polygon tool and the um, the circular and rectangular marquee. So starting with um, this area what I want to do is I want to just start drawing a polygon. I'm not going to worry about getting this really exact to be honest. Um, I'm just going to draw this polygon around the sides. This little very specific thing I'm just going to kind of cut it short. Um, and I'm just going to go around the edge of that. Now I've come up against the edge of the dome now and the polygonal tool does not do me a great deal of good with this dome because it's a circular shape. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of get a base kind of general polygon going and I've just kind of drawn a straight line over here. We're going to get the rest of this with some ellipses. Um, and I'm going to come down the edge, the right edge of the courthouse, the, and I'm going to go just a little outside of the image. I'm going to take that over to the left, bottom left corner, and then I'm going to take that back up to where I started, right up here. You'll notice that that tool has a little circle next to it, indicating that you're going to complete the selection. You're touching the, the beginning. Um, if you don't quite hit it, you can double click and it will draw a straight line from the last point to the first point. And I've got a selection started here that is really um, uh, fine start. Okay, no, no big deal. Um, but what's going to happen now is I'm going to need to start adding to the selection. And probably the best way to do this is because it's easy to kind of lose your selection when you do this. Um, I'm going to select this in, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to save this incrementally with every piece that I add. So I'm going to select save selection and I'm just going to call it courthouse. And right now this is going to be a new channel but pretty soon we're going to be adding to this channel. So let's click OK. Alright and now I'm going to select this shape over here. I'm going to start at the top right corner. I'm going to start a little bit outside the document just slightly. And don't worry if you cut this off a tad. I don't really care. But let's go down this edge and down the side. Let's go to the bottom right corner and I'll just double click to complete that selection. Now I've got the bottom right selected. Let's do a select, save selection. And now I want to, we saw this earlier, I want to click on that channel where it says new and I want to choose courthouse. By the way, if you want to cheat, these selections are already saved. So I'm going to click courthouse and now I'm going to, instead of replacing it, I'm going to add to that channel and click OK. Now I'm going to deselect and I'm going to start working on this dome. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to change to the elliptical marquee. And what is really probably the best way to do this, as you can see, these are very obviously um, clear circles. Um, the best way to do this is probably from the center because I've got a pretty clear center point right here. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Now this is not an exact circle, but um, I do probably want to draw it from the center. So I'm going to hold down to the Alt key and I'm going to come over to the edges. And it's very likely that you're not going to get this exactly on the money right away. You're going to have to scoot it around a little bit with that space bar. You basically are going to have to. So I'm still holding down the Alt key and I'm going to use the space bar along with the Alt key to move this around until I've got it in place. And I'm going to, I'm kind of, um, it's a process of kind of moving it, doing a little tweak to the, to the um, size, moving it again. And I think right about there is, is pretty darn good. 
So I'm going to roll with that. <clears throat> um, and I think this should encompass. I think this should intersect well with with my polygonal selection that I was doing with the two uh, objects here. So I'm going to click select again, and we're just going to keep doing this. Save selection, courthouse, and we're going to add to that selection and click OK. You don't have to deselect every time if you don't want to. Um, I'm just doing it because it's easier than trying to add to the selection with the shift key. That's It starts to get confusing because you're trying to use shift and alt and spacebar at the same time and it's different if you start with shift and then click versus click and then shift. Um, it gets confusing. So um, I just do the save every time. So um, let's get this dome up here. Uh, same way, I'm going to hold down the Alt. I'm going to start from roughly the center, but again, uh, it's very unlikely that I'll get it exact. So I'm going to have to use that space bar to kind of scoot it around periodically. And once I've got that top dome, uh, well, middle dome, it's not the top dome, is it? Um, that's close enough. I'm just going to let it go. We'll put it in like that and again select save selection. Let's add to the courthouse channel and click OK. And let's deselect. I'll take a quick look at my courthouse channel to see where it is. So that's basically what the selection looks like right now. And I'll show you in a minute here how to reload this because we're going to have to do that. So <clears throat> let's grab this top ellipse. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I'm still not on the top. Close to the top. Okay, just doing the same thing. I started from the middle. I'm using the space bar to move it around. And I'm just resizing it, moving it, resizing it, moving it until I've got it in, in the place that I want it. And all right. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Um, let's do a select, save selection. Put it in the courthouse channel, add to channel, click OK. Let's deselect. And I'm going to switch my marquee tool to the rectangular marquee. And I'm just going to grab this structure up here. I think I can get that a little closer. There we go. And I'm going to switch back to the elliptical marquee. Let's do this one time. Just I'll, I'll actually just add to the selection one time. I'm going to hold down the shift key and you can see that little plus next to my crosshair. So that's indicating that I'm about to add to the selection. Again, I've got the um, elliptical marquee tool on now. And if I hold that down and click and drag, I can let up the shift key now. And I'm adding to the selection. So I'm going to use my alt key to drag it from the middle. And I'm going to use, again, the space bar, same as before, to move it around and resize it bit by bit until I've got it kind of where I want it here. There we go. And when you let up, you can see it actually adds to the selection. So you've got, now you've got this whole area selected. Okay, so let's click Select, Save Selection. Save it to the courthouse channel, add to the channel, click OK. Let's deselect, and I'm going to just grab the last two ellipses. I'm going to do these both uh, before saving. OK, there's the first one. Oh, whoops press the wrong button. Then I'm going to hold down shift, 
geez, even I get confused. I'm going to click, and now I've got, now I'm adding to the selection. There we go. And then I'll just grab that last little bit with the polygonal lasso. That'll be just fine. Hold down the shift to add to the selection. And once you've clicked the first time, you can let up that shift. I'm still adding to the selection, as you can see. And I just double clicked at the end there to complete the transaction. Okay, now I'm going to select, save selection one last time, save it to the courthouse, and add it to the channel. Click OK. All right, now I'm going to deselect and let's zoom out to fit. You can um, press Command-0 or, or Control-0 on PC to zoom it to fit. It's a handy little shortcut key quite often. And I'm going to click on Select Load Selection. And what I want to load is the channel that we just made called Courthouse. And that's going to be a new selection. So as you can see, everything that we've done this whole time is now selected. All right, and I'm going to turn on the Move tool, and I'm going to drag it over to the other document until I switch, and then I'm going to drop it in right here. Okay. And I've gotten something that is a little too big. I'm going to press Command T to transform it. Let's get it to where the bottom left corner is actually in the corner of the document here. I'm going to press Command T to transform it and what's going to happen here is this is too big. I can't see the edges of the transformation so I've got to zoom out a little bit. So that's what I was talking about earlier. I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm just going to bring it down to where it's basically in this area. So there you go. Um, and that looks not bad. Um, but a real composite, a good composite, um, you would ideally alter the lighting a little bit because this image, the foreground was lit in the daytime, but the background suggests an entirely different lighting. So um, a good way to do that in this case, um, keep that those three words in mind, in this case, uh, every image is kind of an, an individual beast. So in this particular case, a good way to relight this to match the background a little better is using the layer styles that we learned. We can just double click on that empty area, just like we learned in the emphasis unit, and we can kind of play with some of these. A good one in this case to do would be a gradient overlay. And I can turn on the gradient overlay. I want to click on the word gradient overlay, not just the checkbox. I want to get to the gradient overlay options. And I can click on the gradient editor. And I'm going to change the color stops to match colors in the in this fireworks image. So let's click on that first color stop. A gradient is a fade from one color to the other. So this is how you edit gradients. Um, you just These are the color stops. I've got this one selected right now. You can tell by the little black triangle there. And I can click on that color. When I'm using the color picker, I can come outside the color picker and I'll get my um, eyedropper and I can just use the eyedropper to pick out colors in the in the image okay so I've got kind of a red that I pulled out of the fireworks image and I'm gonna click on that other gradient stop and I'm going to grab another red or maybe even an orange color out of that fireworks image so, and actually these should be flipped. That's okay, we don't have to do that here. Let's just click OK. And right here, let's reverse the gradient so that it flips. 
I want the light on the top and the dark on the bottom. Okay, now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that doesn't make much sense. That just looks like a solid um, cutout with a gradient color in it. Well, remember those blend modes? This is where those blend modes really starts to come in handy. You can draw lighting right onto your image. You can um, kind of put in special effects with these blend modes. And I could, for example, choose um, a darkening mode like color burn or multiply or linear burn. Those are kind of harsh, but multiply is a good choice. And bring down the opacity maybe just a tad. And I can kind of experiment with these and see which one I like best. So actually I think I like color burn the best, but the colors need to be a little bit lighter. So let me go back to my gradient editor here and I'm going to pick out a little bit brighter color for the first stop of the gradient. There we go. And let's pick out a little bit brighter color for the second stop of the gradient. So this is just a process of trial and error. You just kind of keep trying until you get some results. Whoa! That's not going to be what we're looking for. I think I ended up with an extra stop in there. Yes, I did. I was wondering what was going on there. There we go. And you can certainly alter the opacity and kind of, you know, it's just a process of experimentation and playing with this. But this definitely makes it look more like this courthouse is actually in this scene being lit by the fireworks that are going off behind it. Um, I could go into more detail, but um, this has gone on for long enough, <laughs> just uh, as they say. So um, that gives you lots and lots of selection tools to play with. That gives you a very good overview of layers. And um, have fun with Project One. I look forward to seeing them.